Now we have a keynote speech, our keynote speech for the plenary session. Ula Amgren is the United Nations Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative in the Philippines. Today he's going to talk about why youth entrepreneurship is important to achieving the SDGs by 2030. He's been with the UN for over 25 years working on humanitarian affairs, development, peace and security, and disaster relief. This is his third year with us at the Philippine Social Good Summit. Friends, please give a warm round of applause for Ula Almgren. Thank you. This happens to me a lot. Okay. And uh, a good day to everyone. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. So as you heard, my name is uh, Ula Almgren. Uh, I'm the United Nations Resident Coordinator in the Philippines. And I would like to start this by thanking Maria Reza and all our friends at Rappler for partnering up with my colleagues from the United Nations Development Program in bringing the Social Good Summit to the Philippines for the sixth time since 2012. And I'd also like to thank all of you for taking uh, the time to uh, join us here today. And I think just to help circulation a little bit, we've been in the room for a pretty long time now. Why don't we give ourselves a good round of applause for just turning up. Thank you. I want to hear more than that when I'm finished here, okay? <laughs> Now, so some of you, I guess, looking at me here, may wonder, why does the United Nations wheel out an old guy, everything is, is relative, I guess, to talk about how youth entrepreneurships can contribute to the achievements of the SDGs? Don't we have somebody younger who can talk on, on this subject? And, uh, okay, if you do, uh, you may have a point, but I would like to point out that once upon a time, this here was me. <laughs> I've been young. You know. I can relate. You know. But when this picture was taken uh, half a century or some, and some ago, my parents could uh, hardly have imagined the world as it is today. The world then was recovering from the social and economic upheaval of a world war. And in the decades since, humankind has made leaps and bounds in development, for good and sometimes, we have to admit it, uh, for worse. And much of it has been unforeseen. Much of today's technology and innovations would have appeared like science fiction to my parents then, and if sci-fi is suggestive of a culture's forecast for its future, I could say the world progressed quite differently from the expectations or imaginations people appear to have had when we watch those olden sci-fi movies today, if you're into that. So here I am again. Some have, may, of you may have met me in the previous uh, Social Good Summits. This is the third time here uh, in the Philippines and where we come together to conceive and incubate ideas that will drive positive development. Turn the bad to good, uh, and the good to even better. Every year I participate in the Social Good Summit, I'm inspired to see so many young people in age, or as is my case, in spirit, come together to share ideas and develop solutions for the future. To us at the United Nations, it makes really a world of difference, knowing tomorrow's generation is this eager to participate and collaborate. Because it is you who will inherit the planet post-2030. But then what's so special about 2030 and the years from now until then? Well, let's take a moment just quickly and look back to the year 2000. Many of you here today, just looking out the room and trying to scan the ages here, are millennials. So 2000 uh, would not be all that long after you were born, or perhaps not long, that long before you were born. And with the turn of uh, the millennium, the world came together, and for the first time, 
agreed on a global development agenda. That was the United Nations Millennium Declaration and the launch of the Millennium De Development Goals, what we refer to as the MDGs. Eight goals to rally global intent and resources for advancing human development in the coming 15 years. And when we look back today, we can see just how powerful that shared intent, that global partnership, was in reaching towards a world with fewer people living in extreme poverty, with more people having access to education, where inequalities between men and women were reduced, where more children survived their first years, where maternal health was improved, the prevalence of HIV, malaria, and other diseases decreased, and where measures were put in place to safeguard our environment. But as the world appro approached 2015, the end year of the Millennium Development Goals, it became very clear that the objectives that had been set in 2000 would not be fully reached, and certainly that more work remained to be done. So the member states, the 193 member states of the United Nations, asked themselves, and they asked millions of people through a global survey, what's next? And the results of this led to the successor of the Millennium Development Goals, the 2030 Agenda, and its 17 sustain Sustainable Development Goals, which we are now in the second year of implementing uh, on our journey towards 2030. But not just more of the same, though. Compared to the MDGs, the SDGs now are transformative. So instead of looking at a reduction in the number of people living in poverty, the Sustainable Development Goals speaks or, or speak of ending extreme poverty altogether. And the SDGs also broaden the scope from eight objectives to 17 integrating human development with sustainable development in order not to let the development for the current generation, for those of us who are here now, deplete natural resources and our environment for future generations, our children and their children. The SDGs are also universal. They apply equally to the global north if there is one, as they do to the Global South, recognizing that all nations have to contribute and all nations have to adjust if the objectives are to be, be achieved. So the SDGs serve as a guide to help us achieve the world we want by 2030, to advance human development, to safeguard our planet, to bring prosperity for all, to turn conflict to peace, and to establish a partnership for their achievement that the world has never seen before. They are ambitious, but they are essential to our future. Perhaps at this point, it may be worth to remind ourselves, here in the Philippines, while poverty incidence is decreasing, and that is positive, still one in every four Filipinos live in or very close to poverty. Here in the Philippines, one in every three children is stunted, and the prevalence of stunting among children under five continues to rise. The Philippines is the only Asia-Pacific country where the rate of teen pregnancies rose over the last decade. In the Philippines, one out of 10 Filipinos do not have access to electricity in their homes, and the Philippines still places among the lowest in ASEAN for key infrastructure services. And the internet? <laughs> well, I'll skip that slide. <laughs> so uh, these are a few examples where there's much positive development here and where there's a fantastic intent in the Ambition Natin 2040, which looks at where does the Philippines and where do Filipinos want to be in 2040? And the Philippine development plans that are leading towards that ambition. Uh, there's still 
much work that remains to be done. And this is work that's urgent. So now, is there anybody in the room here today who believes that we will be able to address these challenges fully and achieve our goals simply by doing more with what we already have? I don't think so. To achieve these will require disruption, new ways of thinking, new technology, and new ways of working together. So governments will need to shape partnerships with other governments, with the private sector, with the academe, with civil society, and not the least, with the youth. Because who is better placed to think outside of the well-worn tracks of today's solutions than the young? We are thrilled to tap the tremendous potential of young people to commit to and support the Sustainable Development Goals, starting today and as you mature. My generation had a hand in bringing the world we share to what it is today, again for good and sometimes for worse. Now we need fresh ideas and fresh minds to innovate and develop new approaches if we are to achieve the SDGs. No innovation is too small to be counted, and the participative power of social media is an important catalyst to this change, to do social good in harnessing and maximizing the potential of innovation. And as the social media hub of the world, or even the social media capital of the world, as some refer to the Philippines, you have a fantastic contribution to make in this field. These days, um, we see more and more people, particularly then young women and men, push the boundaries of citizen engagement and work towards the future they want. We see the emergence of new infrastructures of social innovators, entrepreneurs and civil society, and dramatic shifts in the development landscape accelerated by new technologies and new finance models. Technology is a powerful enabler and a vessel for innovation. But technology does not equal innovation per se. The key aspect here is the value added and measurable progress to bring about real improvements in people's lives. Innovation for development is about identifying more effective solutions that add value for the people affected by development challenges. People and their governments are users, our clients, our members as the United Nations. At the United Nations, we firmly believe that achieving the SDGs requires deliberate, calculated new ways of triggering change. Young people have the greatest stake in the future, so they must be engaged as agents of innovation and change. Young people around the world have made valuable contributions to sustainable development. And these efforts must be considered when developing policy that aims to support and encourage innovation. We heard about it just now in the, in the panel here. With the interconnectedness of people around the world, the opportunities to work together and collaborate truly seem endless. However, at the same time, we must recognize that many young people are also frustrated with educations that sometimes are not quite good enough for the world of today, uh, out of work with insecure jobs that leave too much beyond their grasp, or without en enough opportunities to express themselves, share their values and take part in the decisions that affect their lives. Often, however, these same young people, and I thought it was great to hear the example about Tawi Tawi just now, uh, these same young people only need a gentle push or intervention to create conditions to move, move out of that frustrated state. And we have to do everything we can so they don't get stuck in what can easily become a vicious circle. So now I've been um, talking here for what in the room probably feels like a long time. But uh, let me then attempt to uh, make an illustration through a popular show that often represents real issues in its own unique satirical way. It will help if there's sound. 
Bolivia, East Springfield. My name is Nelson Mandela Muntz. Nelson? And my dream is to make and market custom bicycles. Nelson, <gasps> my dream is to make enough money so as I can get the rest of this tattoo removed. <sighs> Sorry I wasted your time. No fool would take a chance on a loser like me. I will. I'll take a chance on you, Nelson Muntz. Nelson, I gotta take this computer to the pawn shop so as we can get White Castle for your birthday. <sighs> Nelson, I see you started a small business. Yeah, some anonymous dude sent me 50 bucks. Probably someone cool like Famous Amos or Baba Booey. And I'm going to justify his faith in me. Well, whoever your mysterious donor is, he or she really wants you to succeed. Ding dong! Ooh, your first customer. Be nice. Right, nice. Good day, Mr. Barf Breath. Good day to you. Let me be frank. Everyone thinks you're a wuss. So we'll change the pink to black, elevate the seat, trust me, it's slimming, and change this wicker basket to no basket. Do you like it? Oh, I love it. Hmm. Mmm. Wow. My first job. Tonight, I'm having peanut butter and jelly. No more PB or J for me. <laughs> All righty. Of course, towards the end of this episode, if we watched it to the end... Uh, unfortunately, uh, we will find that Lisa here, who contributed uh, crowdfunding for Nelson's idea, with the ultimate objective that he could earn money and afford to stay in school, found that she failed at her goal. Before, because, in fact, Nelson's uh, radical approach to bicycle modification made his business boom, and soon he found the money too good and the requirements of his time so intensive that he dropped out of school altogether. Uh, and Lisa Simpson's failure to meet her objective echoes perhaps sometimes the frustrations of many invested in social enterprise. Nelson here, his predicament also demonstrates the frustration many young entrepreneurs may feel or face struggling to get their businesses off the ground. And it's in precisely in response to these challenges and because of the responsibility young people carry as heirs to the future that convergence for the achievement of the SDGs is imperative. Responsible social entrepreneurship appears to stand at the convergence of technology and innovation, collaboration and citizen engagement. So now to perhaps further stir your imagination, and as you already know, more and more enterprises today are not your traditional bricks and mortar that manufacture goods and provide services. Just like uh, e-commerce such as uh, Airbnb and we heard about Uber fill a nice niche by linking products and services, so can social enterprise. And just one week ago, uh, Filipino social enterprise educacion uh, .ph was recognized with the Youth Social Entrepreneurship Award 2017 by ASEAN. It was the single entry from the Philippines, and founder and proprietor Henry Motte Munoz had designed a portal collating information on available courses across schools and universities. You may be familiar with this. Students are able to apply online, find scholarships, and de design a career path all in one place. Check this out.
Henry is here today, if he is, he could stand up. But uh, if he's um, in his absence, I still, I, th I still think that we can afford him a round of applause for winning this prestigious award at ASEAN. <laughs> to Henry, a great achievement and hopefully a great inspiration for all of you in this room now and all uh, who are invested and interested in, in, uh, in this field of activity. So today I'll be judging entries developed over the previous day's uh, hackathons. And I'm really excited to see more investments in solving social problems applying the acumen of business and marketing. The Asian Development Bank notes that uh, this is the most effective in areas where government and markets have failed to deliver. And ADB also notes that these solutions are often efficient, affordable, cost-effective, and, wait for it, sustainable. I hope this Good so Social Good Summit will provide you with a platform, and I know that it has already, to discuss development challenges in an open and constructive manner. So for the successful achievement of the Sustainable Development Goals, we need fresh ideas and we need solutions. Uh, as one of my colleagues pointed out to me, I myself will likely uh, only benefit obliquely to the change that you will bring to the world. But just as my generation's labors have helped shape the world that you have inherited, millennials will make the world better for this generation. Here. And these two guys, they are my children, Hugo and uh, Leo. And they will be in their teens in 2030. And the world they will experience will be the one that you shape. So the challenge that I uh, throw into the room and to you right here and now is to take care of the kids, my children, yours, and wait until you're out of the teenagers, uh, and the children they may have uh, in future generations. The fulfillment of the 2030 agenda will be your legacy to these succeeding generations. Thank you very much. Maraming salamat po.